guys, happy Friday. Oh my God, I'm so excited because it's Friday. Oh, it's just Friday, right? So it's a real Friday. It's a real Friday. Because last week we had a chaotic week and the weekend was chaos because I went down to LA. So Matt had to take oh over. God. So I've that already, was a little bit chaotic, right. right? Yeah. Oh my God. So anyways, okay. I cannot wait to show you this. I am so excited about this. And thanks everybody for being so patient with this bag. Closer. So I was just saying in our reels earlier that I believe my hunch is the butterscotch leather has become Parker Thatcher's signature leather, signature fabrication. Every bag that we introduce, this is going to be my favorite thing to go to. I'm gonna own every single bag that we own in butterscotch. I'm gonna have a full butterscotch. Everything's better with butterscotch. a strong scotch. butterscotch statement. Yeah, you know why? For me personally, and I think for most of you out there, it's no fuss, no muss, okay? It's a color that goes with everything. It's really light. It has the squishiness that I love. This leather gets darker with time. And if you are a person who understands beautiful leather, I feel like you'll really appreciate it because it's a natural, it's very natural. There's going to be little nicks on it because that's how natural skin works. We've got a little cellulite, we've got bumps, we've got stretch marks and it shows it, but then it just gets darker as you use it. And it's, it's truly like buying a baseball glove. That's how I feel. And I think a lot of people have the butterscotch sling. It just wears so well. And then if I kind of miss it when I don't have it. And it was so funny because we were doing something and they're like, can you, can you take the butterscotch sling, but can you use a new one and not the old, this gross old one that you've been using? And I'm like, okay, all right, I'll take it and I'll shoot it. And then it was so weird. I was like, I, I want my old one back. So like, I, I did what I needed to do with the new one. And I could have just started using a new one, but then I, I went back to my old one. That's how much I feel like you really could it's connect. It's personalized. Yeah, and like you've broken it in. It's, it's like, I think going like the back glove, to your, Like you said, the glove. Yeah, and I think it's like going back to your glove where you're like, okay, I could have a brand new glove, but I've got this great broken in one and I just love how it feels. So the Luna is just, just really beautiful. So I just love this. And our XL Mimi's just came back in stock. And you can see like, I'm gonna do a whole thing next week of every bag we have in the butterscotch. And if there's anybody who wants something that they we have that you're like, I wish it could be in the butterscotch, I think everything we have is in the butterscotch now, except for the Luna bag. And I know so many people have been waiting for it. So I just kind of want to go over it because it did take a, it's like fine wine. All the other Lunas kind of came out in the snap. This one was a little harder to work with because of the nature of the fabric itself. And also I had to make it super complicated, right? So I wanted this one to not be piped in the darker cognac I, because I loved how beautiful it was on its own. And I felt like the cognac piping would have given it, just taken the attention away from it. So we had this beautifully um, old school way of just sewing it. And you know, it might look really simple, but this is a very complicated thing. And it was many trials and errors until we could get it to fold over perfectly like this because What's they so are getting hand that? done. Well, I think if you're doing it on a machine, I'm not sure it's not, you know, I don't think brain surgery, but the way we're doing it and the shape of it, there was a lot of things that we had to, to kind of technically, technically work with and like kind of really like take apart a machine that normally, you know, like a sewing thing where you're sewing it by hand, but we just had to so why did you go to so much effort to achieve that? What's special about this? I just personally, it's aesthetics. And uh -huh. I really wanted it to be, you know, lined with its own leather. I wanted it to be beautifully stitched with the white stitching. Um, it's just a really beautiful piece of work. And it, it, it feels like it. When you get it, you'll see what I mean. It's wonderful. And if you already have the butterscotch sling, you're probably going to be the um, expert in what um, strap goes with it, because I am so boring that of course, I read. Which bat, which strap would you use, Matt? You know now, oh, the denim yeah. one, right? I just, I truly followed, love. Followed by the navy. Yeah, because I, I, but I just love how denim looks with um, this butterscotch leather. There's something so wonderful about it. So yes, yes, I would probably use the denim if you're going to ask me honestly. But so many people have been doing the tiger, which I love with it. I see that on a lot of the XL Minis and photos. Um, obviously, the Modernist is another great one. Summer is coming, so I feel like a pop of color would be wonderful with that. 
So it's endless. I mean, this is like having a natural canvas and you could really just utilize what colors really speak to you. I'm kind of really into like thinner straps lately, so I'm gonna be bringing in some more of those. Oh, and yes, you could also use the tortoise one. We're almost out of stock on that. So if you want the um, tortoise one, that would be a great little addition. This new strap, I think is wonderful. So I might actually, I've been I, I've been testing this guy out because I'm kind of into the shorter strap or the, the, the less wide strap today. So I think this is wonderful as a great crossbody to use with that. Um, let's also examine real quick what you can get into it. So look at that, how great is that? So I think what it is, it's like, we love the sling bag. So that's a given. I love how the sling bag feels against your body. And I wanted to just then say, hey, you know what? What's another handbag that could feel like that, but more of a handbag instead of a sling bag? So this is kind of the in-between a handbag and still you can have it feel like a sling bag where you're fully hands-free, oh, you know, and it's a little bit dressier, I would say. And it's just, you know, I love how it actually feels against your body when it's, you know, just hanging. I've been using this guy so much and I have it in caramel suede. My denim one I love. My mom's been using this one. So it's my sisters. They love this one. Um, the black leather is just truly wonderful. I mean, this leather is so beautiful, Matt. It really is. I mean, I, I personally, it's like black leather. You're like, okay, how hard is black leather? Again, we go through extensive trial and error to figure out the best black leather because black leather could be very plasticky at times and I feel like it's, it doesn't look expensive at all. Or black leather could be really shiny. I love a pebbled black leather, but sometimes that gets really gray. So it sounds weird, but the most simple thing becomes the hardest thing to do. So this- Because it's not hiding behind anything. It, it is just the, the black, black leather. leather. So yes. Be good. So I use the same black leather on the Luna bag and on our um, Parker saddle bags. So and the quilted guy. There. Yes, and the quilted guy. And so it's it's crazy, but that's a really tough one. And we also use the same supple black. I mean, it's just squishy. It's really just a wonderful, beautiful, I mean, feel it, right? ASMR through the screen. Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to show you is sizing. And you know, Catherine who works here had a really good question. She goes, you know, people sometimes can't really figure out what's, what the different sizes are and how it looks. So we've got the little buddy who fits perfectly. So I think what a wonderful thing merch to put the butterscotch into the butterscotch. I think that'd be really fun. And I also have, want to show you relative to the little buddy, the size of our little guy, which is the keychain. So you can see, you could actually, the, <laughs> the other day I went out to dinner and I was like, oh, I have my keychain and I have my little buddy. And I hung this against that with the crossbody, and it was actually kind of cool. You hung a little guy from a little buddy. Yeah, and then I had my keys on it, and it was kind of cool. So that I did, and I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and I am working so that everybody knows, uh, if you buy a little buddy, I think it's really exciting because I'm working. Oh, I, you know what? I get this all mixed up. I can't. Sorry. I, I, I don't have my glasses on. Wow. Yeah, no, it's all right, it's caught. Okay, so real quick, I am working on a some kind of a holder so that you could actually attach the little buddies to your bags so it could be like an outside pocket. I don't know, I just think it's fun and I'm experimenting with that. So if you do get a little buddy, it might be a bonus to put on all your bags in the future. So as you can see, you could put the little guy in there and you're off to the races. And um, yellow is another really happy one for this um, spring. So anyways, I, I'm just really excited about it. So what's going on, Matt? I just love this thing. It's so squishy. Matt's like, I don't know, I'm really hungry. That's that's the real truth. It's almost two o'clock and we've been on a call yeah. since what? I don't even know, this morning at 9 a.m.? Yep. And then I, I went to go to the dentist and you're, you're I'm still, half I'm so impressed, still. you're still half numb, right? <laughs> Matt's like, what do you want for lunch? I was like, I don't think I should really you're chew. Like, you're like, I can't chew. And I can't even drink. Oh, I thought like I could drink coffee. Did you dribble? And I was dribbling. I was like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Use a straw. Yeah. And I'm like, I need a straw, but we don't have any straws at home. That's so great. anyway, so I'm like seriously half numb right now. And like, you know, when it's like sort oh, of fading. She so really numbed you up, huh? I know, man. Wow. It's because I had both, of course, cavities on top and bottom. Just getting old. She's like, your teeth are a little cracked on this side, so I'm gonna fill it are in. Are you gonna do a mouth guard too? Maybe from all that, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so 
let's go back to the uh, meditation thing. I just had this thought in my head and I just had to tell everyone. I was driving over here and there's a woman who was on, there's this podcast that's just really kind of fun. It's called 10% Happier. And it's this really cool guy who's like, I think he's an ABC kind of part of that whole group. And he does the weekend news, etc. So he went See the through, one you said he was talking to Rich? Yes, he was on Rich Roll and he had a panic attack on set. So, you know. Live on air, right? Yeah. Wow. What if I have a panic attack all of a sudden? Oh my God, I can't. So anyways, I think that's what happened. Well, it's not funny, but it's just hopefully like. Hopefully you're not doing what he did to encourage it. Right, so he's telling Rich Roll that he had a panic attack on air, which was really scary and he didn't know, it just came out of the blue. And, um, and then um, the doctor was like, okay, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, you know, I've been kind of depressed. So he started self-medicating on ecstasy and cocaine. And the doctors were like, well, maybe that has something to do with this uh, panic attack. So it was. So he started taking up randomly meditation, begrudgingly and just, you know, something he discovered. And now it's become his real jam and his real thing, which is really interesting. So he had a guest on today and she practices this type of yoga, which I do at night, Matt, mm -hmm. that helps me put go to bed. Mm -hmm. It's called Yoga Nidra. And it's really like focusing on all parts of your body and like really focusing and like relaxing, you know, like relax your one finger, your second finger. So what Dr. Huberman, these all kind of play together. And I think that takes the, um, for me personally, the woo woo aspect out of all this like meditation talk is when there's actual scientific backing up of certain things and looking at your brain scans. And I think that's what's so great about what Huberman does is I was telling Matt, uh, Thatcher and I listened to Huberman on the way to school every morning. And I was like, you know, Dr. Huberman is kind of becoming like the Bill Nye and science guy for our generation in a weird way. And even like for their generation, like boys like him like to listen to him because I think they, they want to learn about how to build bigger muscles. It's basically what they're looking for. And um, so anyways, so in the Huberman lab, they've been studying people who do yoga nidra. What they're finding is you are what they're finding one thing which is really really important and fascinating is when they look at people under you know when they're analyzing them while they're in that state you're actually replenishing your dopamine and i think matt and i were talking about this i didn't know that if you deplete your dopamine i guess you have sort of a gas tank then that's where you get sick your immune system goes down and all the other jazz that follows and it's hard to replenish that dopamine gas tank in your body so anyway so that's a really interesting aspect i think of when you think of yoga and how it relates to what it can actually do for your body which is really interesting so anyways i'm still studying this and i'm really enjoying it and i find that it's just i look forward to it in the morning and at night i really do and i'm getting into it more and more which is crazy in addition to all the other stuff what else am i going to add Pretty soon I'm going to be like, it's six o'clock at night and I'm still doing my morning routine. I don't know, but you keep, you keep pushing the alarm up by like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. He's like, minutes. gosh darn it, can you please stop? Yeah, because at first it was like 5.45, now it's 5.30 because I'm like, oh, I have to have my 20 minutes of yoga time. So pretty soon it's going to be like 5 a.m. Anyways, no, but it's good. It's really good and I think it puts you into a really cool space. And I think the one thing that actually today I noticed a really big change was when I usually wake up, and I'm gonna be honest about this, I get anxious. That's the first feeling I get. It's just like, <gasps> And then you used up. to multiply it by turning the news on immediately. I know, right? But I get anxious and I'm because I'm so focused on like, oh my God, all the stuff that I have to face today. I do, and I get this anxious feeling every morning, like, I don't wanna get out of bed, you know, like this. Like, you know, when you're like at the top of the roller coaster and you're just gonna look down and you're like, <gasps> that feeling? That's how I feel every morning. Today I woke up and do you know what happened? What, the first thought that went through my head was like, you got this. It wasn't an anxious feeling, it wasn't anything. The first thought that came into my head was you got this. That's right. And I think that's a huge change, huge that's change. That's a huge change. I did not get the anxiety that I usually get in the morning. So anyway, but my anxiousness is not like <coughs> all maybe day. Maybe you're better fortunate. suited for attacking the day better suited, but it was just, you know what? That mindset totally changed. I don't know why, and it might not be tomorrow, but today, that's Hopefully how I felt. You got fine. this. And it was like, I was like, whoa, crazy. Okay, I got this? Okay. And so anyways, interesting. 
Interesting, interesting. Love to hear that. Yeah. So we're doing a lot of stuff here and I just feel like there's something that I'm really working on to attach to the bags, which I'm really, really excited about. And Matt and I were talking about this and I'm just really excited to show it to you once we get it going. But I just really like for us, I think what I'm finding is we just want to bring, you know, we keep saying it, we want to bring ease and elegance into your life, but then you're questioning like, well, how, do, how does that happen? You know, like, what, how, how can I, I work towards my goals with this concept and bringing, you know, this beautiful product in my life. I feel like, how does it make my life more easy and elegant? How can I achieve more ease and elegance? So that's something that Matt and I are working on and I feel like it's a really important part of what we're trying to share and what we're trying to do, so. And it's how we measure the validity of what we're putting yeah, out. Yeah, like, you know, every time now, you know, it's such a great North Star, like when we add a product, like, hey, you know what? Is this a product just for fun? Or is this a product where it's like, you know, like the little buddy, I feel like this will add a, so much ease and elegance into your life. Like now you can have this tiny little bag that you could take everywhere, it's beautiful and it's easy. And you know what? You have so many straps, you could attach your current strap to it. You can make it fun by getting a new strap. But I feel like it's great. It goes inside your bag. You could travel with it. You could put it inside your sling bag. So yes, this passes the test. And I feel like butterscotch leather, same thing. It gets darker with time. People might see it as like, oh my God, it's so light color. Don't worry about it. You might get a spot on it. It might get a little dirty, but it's just all gonna get darker and everything kind of just evens out and it becomes your own thing. And you will see like so many people write back and they show pictures of their sling bag that's butterscotch. And it's just like a baseball glove. It's so insane. So anyways, have a happy weekend and look into Yoga Nidra because even five minutes could really help you. Not once, but you know, make it a practice, just like the planking, which now I am on month three of every day doing it. That's great. Another thing I add to my repertoire. Good thing. But you know what? That's two or three minutes. It's no big deal. And yeah, so I think we should write down a whole, like we'll do a blast one day. So sign up for our emails, because I want to share this. Because people ask me like, what do you do? And, what, and I keep adding all this stuff. So maybe we could just do one email blast of like the weird things that I have, I do every morning and it keeps getting bigger and bigger, but I don't feel like it's so much more work. It's actually makes it everything better and better. So anyways, whatever. I think we need okay. to have a page on our site, which is your current routine. I know. And it should be like, like a little mark, like added whatever date oh. and then it gets bigger, but they're all good things. And I feel like, and they're not like time consuming where it's like, it's gonna take hours, maybe adding two more minutes to your repertoire. So yeah, maybe wake up 10 more minutes earlier because you gotta do your yoga practice in the morning or whatever it is, sound bath. Oh my God, I can't, we're doing a live sound bath. Or I can't wait to share that. We should do, we should share that too. Anyways, <laughs> all right, have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Bye guys.